welcome to the Pod Basics Hip Openers class with me, Kamari Sky. So if you have a couple blocks, go ahead and grab those and let's begin in Mountain Pose. So just standing here, feeling your feet very grounded. You can even lift up your toes to really get the sense of your whole foot balanced evenly on the mat. Keep that spot, release the toes, gently draw up your quadriceps, gently draw in your navel. Feel the whole lower half of your body feeling so grounded. Let's work with the upper part. Take your shoulders up, back, and down. Reach through the fingertips as you externally rotate the arms so your thumbs are pointed outward, palms pointing semi-forward. Feel the broadness across your shoulders. Now imagine you have a book on your head. Balancing that book. Feeling strong and solid, just like a mountain. Take a few breaths here. And now, if it's comfortable for you, join me in closing your eyes for a few breaths. If that doesn't work, just divert your gaze to the floor. As you breathe, feel your body, feel its stability. Feel your whole being just as you are right here, right now. One more big breath together. Take hands to heart, and we'll do the practice of Samabriti. Samabriti is four counts on your inhale and four counts for your exhale as we move the arms. So by doing this, it's very calming to the mind and helps us bring focus into our practice. We'll go through it five times. I'll guide you through the first two. Ready? Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Again, inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Practice breathing in through your nose, out through the mouth. One more. A. So join me, <clears throat> inhaling the arms up. Exhale, come through the center and all the way down, forward fold. Breathe in and come part way up. Here your hands could be at your shins, your thighs, or possibly on the floor. And with your exhale, come on down again. Inhale the arms out to the sides and back up, hands at center. So we'll go through that a couple more times together. The first time we're gonna hang out in a forward fold for a little longer, like maybe five breaths, okay? Inhaling with me up, 
exhale, come on down. And here you can just hang out, feeling the weight of your feet balanced. And you can even grab your elbows, you can hang, or you can softly rest your hands on your shins. Breathing. Perhaps you would find it to feel good if you shake your head yes and no. Just releasing the neck and the shoulders as we're down here. And with your next inhale, come part way up. Exhale down. Inhale all the way back up, hands together. Again, inhale up, exhale down. Inhale part way up, exhale down, all the way up. Step your feet a little closer together, and this time when we come part way up, we're gonna come into chair pose together. Breathe in and up. Exhale down. Inhale partially up. And now put more weight in your heels and sit your bottom down and raise your arms up. Okay, I'll give you the side view. So I'm putting more weight in my heels and I'm also squeezing my thighs towards each other as I relax my shoulders and reach through my arms and fingertips. On your inhale, release and come back down to your forward fold. Bend your knees and step into plank pose. Have your shoulders be right over your wrists. Firm the thighs. If you can, while you keep breathing, draw the navel in gently. Go ahead and release the knees to the mat. This is an alternative way that you can practice plank pose in your practice. So again, either be here or come on up to plank and let's breathe three more big breaths. Everybody, and let's all put our knees down and then I'm gonna show you how to release to the floor. You wanna keep your elbows tucked in close to your body, supporting your weight with your hands and using the strength of your upper body to lower down like this. So this is also, and when you start to go to the pod one class, you'll start to learn how to come down without using your knees. But just remember it's always okay to use your knees, especially if you feel like you haven't built up that upper body strength, or if you have some issues with your shoulders. <laughs> so let's do that again. So you can either come with your knees or I'm gonna show you how to do it without using your knees. So here we are in plank pose. Keep your elbows in as you lower yourself down to the floor. And here we all are on the floor. We're gonna come into cobra pose. Breathe in and lift up. This is your basic cobra pose, not pushing weight into your hands. Exhale your forehead down. Again, inhale up. And here we are again, drawing the shoulders back, drawing the elbows back and in. Letting your gaze just be out in front of the mat. Exhaling down. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale, come on down. Press yourself up into all four. Table pose. 
tuck the toes and we'll take downward dog. Downward dog. Hands are shoulder width apart, feet hip width apart. Hold in here. Breathe. Make sure you're putting weight in your thumb and index fingers as well. Deep breaths here as we hold our first downward dog. Exhale, release your knees to the floor and we'll take child pose. Just open your knees a little more, bring your big toes together, send your bottom back towards your heels and walk your arms out in your mouth. If your head doesn't come to the floor comfortably, you can always stack your fists, you can bend your elbows, you can even put a block under your forehead. So just hang out here. Really feeling the rise and fall of your breath. Go ahead and make your way back up and just come around to seated. So today, this week, <laughs> or today's class, because we're just doing video is the theme is hip openers. So hip openers are so beneficial in your yoga practice. Hip openers affect the stability and the strength of your back especially, even your side body. So keeping the hips nice and open and juicy helps you have all around flexibility and uh, vitality. The hips are your biggest joint in the body. So we want to keep them very well lubricated and moving freely. Um, some things to think about with hip openers are, we're going to do a few things where you're crossing your leg like this. If you have any knee issues, Make sure that you flex your ankle to help keep that joint healthy. So that, go ahead and join me in this position. It's called seated figure four. So I've just taken my leg and put it on top of my other leg. So this is the side view. So the target area you would be feeling a stretch right now is in the hip of the leg that's up. Some people would want more sensation in this, so you can lift up and just slide your butt towards your heel and then walk your chest towards your leg. It's just a warm up. So we're not looking for the most intense stretch we've ever felt <laughs> before. A few more breaths. Shake the legs out between sides. And let's go ahead and bring the other leg up. Another great thing about working with the hips is the hips really, really affect the knees and the ankles. So a lot of times if you have knee issues, it really could be stemming from having tight hips. So that's another great reason to work with our mobility in the hips. Take a moment for a few more deep breaths here. And go ahead and release again. We'll shake it out. So join me um, on all four and have some black sandy if you have that. We'll 
press into downward dog again. Go ahead and raise the right leg up and step it forward into a lunge. Practice having your knee right over the ankle. So you can adjust your blocks to be at any level. Once you find your shape, release your center down towards the floor without sacrificing the alignment of your front leg. Set your gaze forward, breathe. Go ahead and release the left knee to the floor. If for any reason your knee feels sensitive, you can continue to keep your toe tucked or you can hold your neck back over. So we're just gonna go a little deeper in the lunge. So you can put your blocks the long way or you might even be able to take your hands to the mat. Just really giving the body time to open up here. So marry the movement with lots of deep breathing. Let's coax these hips open a little more with an inhale back. Exhale, release. Two more times. Holding here. Go ahead and tuck the back toe again. Let go of the blocks. Step back into a lunge. Plank. Lowering down. Breathing in for cobra. Exhale back down. Tabletop. Downward dog. Practicing on the other side, raising the left leg and step it forward. Set your blocks up. Find your alignment with the front leg. Sinking downward, letting the arms and hands be strong, but yet releasing down and grounding. Feel an even amount of weight between the back leg and the front leg. So you're really staying balanced and centered here. Go ahead and lower the right knee down. We'll lower the black setting and sink a little deeper into this low lunge. Pulse lunge, so we'll inhale, release. Exhale, come on deep. Here we go again. One more time. Hang out here for several more breaths. Relaxing the shoulders down the back. And really letting gravity have that right hip. So let's let go, come back into a lunge, step back to plank, lowering down, breathe in and up, exhaling down, press on up and back to downward dog. So you have a couple options. When you're down from Cobra, you can come back to tabletop and then press to downward dog. Or if your practice and strengths allows, 
you can press right up into downward dog from there. Play around with it. So we're gonna move into a cross leg forward fold. So go ahead and raise your right leg up and step it forward. And then bring your left leg behind and have your blocks handy. Here you're going to practice once again having mountain pose feet so your feet are evenly balanced. And then use your blocks to help ground you so you feel a nice big stretch in the hips and the quadriceps. I mean, and the hamstrings. If you want to Play around with moving your body a little more towards the right, a little more towards the left. Find your most potent stretch here. Otherwise, just hang out and breathe. Jaws and cheeks and the forehead. 
No need to think about how far back you're getting. Think about how grounded your feet are and the stretch in the front hip crease here. Moving into side ankle pose, you'll come and take your forearm on your leg, roll the left shoulder back, and reach. So I'll come do it on this side just to show you. So side ankle pose looks like this. Stretching from the top fingers all the way to the side of your left foot. On your inhale, come up to five-pointed star. Your toes are pointed out, your arms up. Inhale. Exhale, palms together, knees bend, goddess pose. Take your awareness down to your feet. Feel that groundedness. Now to your sacrum, to the top of your head. Feel that elongation. Palms press together energetically so you feel that space across the front of your chest. No doubt you feel a nice stretch deep in the hip sockets. Couple more breaths. On your inhale, raise up. Toes come forward. Exhale, hands together and come all the way down for a forward fold. Your hands could be on a block. You don't touch the floor. You could have your fingertips, palms. You could practice walking yourself under your legs a little more. Do keep in mind that you still want to stay evenly balanced on the feet. The tendency is to roll out to the edges of the feet in this pose. Try to keep them flat. On your inhale, press up part way. Turn your right foot with your exhale and come into a lunge again. And then we're going to lower the left knee down. Walk open the right foot a little bit more so we can be in a runner's lunge. Here, you can bring your palms to the floor or use your blocks again. This is our deepest lunge we've been in yet. We're just going to allow it several breaths to respond to this stretch. Now we'll add a quad stretch. So just turn out your right foot and your left hand and bring your right hand to your thigh. This might be enough for some people. The next step would be to just lift up your leg, ankle flex. You feel a quad stretch there, then you can just stay. Or maybe you want to take things a little deeper, reach back and grab the heel. Here you would be revolving your chest up towards the ceiling, bringing your gaze upward. And breathe. This pose should always be practiced ahead of the knee. If you're right on your knee, don't lift up your leg yet. You're not quite ready for that. We don't ever want to put our body weight pressure on our kneecap. All right, let's release. Back to a lunge. Step into flank. Lowering down, breathing in and up, cobra. Lower 
bring back down, downward dog. Okay, friends, let's take that on the other side, raising the left leg, step forward, lunge. Situate your back foot so you can breathe in and come into warrior two. Inhale it up, warrior two. Gazing over your left arm this time. You can even practice engaging the right thigh by pulling up your kneecap. Another thing you can check is that, that your front knee is in alignment with the second and third toe. The torso is straight up and down. Reverse warrior two, taking your right hand, palm comes this way, gaze upward. Again, keeping your shoulders relaxed and really stretching up and over to feel that beautiful stretch in the side body. Inhale, come back to warrior two, and side angle pose. Try to bring your arm to your temple, but if your shoulders don't go that far, just do what you can. Just stay active, reaching, 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 pushing down in this back foot. Finding your stability in all these standing poses that are glorious hip opener. On your inhale, we're gonna come into five point start. Exhale, goddess. We'll be moving goddess this time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. A few more times. Let's go 
into the quadriceps stretch, stretch and the front of the lunge. So just turn your right foot or left foot out a little, your right hand out a little. Remember part one is putting your hand at your hip, drawing your left shoulder back, keeping this right arm strong. Maybe you want to lift up your leg. Maybe you want to grab. See where you're at. Breathe and feel. One more big breath and release back to your lunge, back to pulling, lowering down, breathe, downward dog, hold your downward dog. Sending your heels down right to the floor or towards the floor. Feeling your whole body dynamic in downward facing dog. Go ahead and set your sights to the top of the mat and step between the hands and come to standing. So the peak pose in this class is the eagle pose. And I'm going to show you step by step how to have the most grounded, balanced eagle pose. So just join me in standing again in mountain pose. Go ahead and bend the knees and just cross over the thighs, the left thigh over the right, and put your toe on the floor. And you're already bending down like you're coming into chair pose. Check your hips, see that your hip creases or feel that they're level if you don't have a mirror in front of you. And we're gonna bring the arms at shoulder level and reach out like you're rounding your back and then take the right arm over the left, just like this. So this is kind of known as the Haya pose, but it's a really great warm up for Eagle pose. Here we want to see that the shoulders are level. A lot of times the tendency in Eagle is to come over. We want to stay grounded and straight up and down. Start to feel yourself put a little more weight in your right foot and lift up your left toes. Good. And now release all of it. And shake it out. So we'll do that bouncing on the left foot as well. Okay, so again, finding your groundedness. Bend the knees. The right leg comes over the left this time. Put your toes on the floor. So when we go into the actual eagle pose, you can always do this when your toe is on the floor or you can put a block under your foot. And this time the left arm comes over the right. Sit down into your chair for a little more. Breathe. Feel your groundedness in the left foot and then begin to lift up the right. Now we'll release. So that's a good first step for eagle pose. Now we'll go into the full pose. Just depending on where your practice is today, you can do either one or do modifications. The main thing is to try to keep 
your hips level, your shoulders level. So we'll start again. Always just take your time finding your balance because ultimately that's going to help you hold the pose longer. So go ahead and just bend your knees like you're coming to the chair and then cross over the left. Some people will be able to wrap their foot around that back calf and do that if you can. Then we take the right arm over the left and wind them around. Fingertips pointing up if you can. If you can't grab here, you can always grab your thumb or just do the high up. to talk and <laughs> do that pose at the same time but some other things you can think about is you can sit deeper in to your eagle pose and try to lift up the arms remember with balance poses too you always want to have a focal point to stare at that's not moving <laughs> so let's try it on the other side so this time coming more in We'll cross the right over the left. Find your balance here. Find your hip creases even. And now the left arm goes over the right. And we'll hold. Knees the legs together. Grounded energy through the feet, raising upward. Breathe, breathe, breathe. On your inhale, come out and release. So that's eagle pose. <laughs> no doubt you will experience a lot more eagle pose in your yoga practice in the days, weeks, months, hopefully years ahead. <laughs> So go ahead and spread your feet more than hip width apart. We're going to come down into um, sometimes it's called the yogi's squat or malasana. So you can come from standing by just coming down, placing your palms here. Um, another thing you can do is if you don't feel quite comfortable is slide your Right here, you can come in and still feel that squat. Brick can be at a lower level as well. So just find what works for you. So you can even use your elbows to press your thighs away from you. Still 
feel a nice opening in the hip. If you haven't already, go ahead and bring yourself forward as much as is comfortable for you. And this is a lovely place to bring back the Sama three D breath. If you 
would like to take it a little deeper, you could tuck under the shoulders and interlace your fingers underneath and press upward. But not a half do. <laughs> do what's right for you. Keep breathing and lifting. And now exhale yourself down, vertebra, high vertebra. Draw the knees to the chest. And we'll do a few rocks. Lowering the soles of the feet to the floor and coming into supine bound angle. From here, we're just going to let gravity do the work. You can have your arms at your sides or on your abdomen, either side. So we're making our descent now towards Shavasana. Take a moment here to feel your breath within your body. one it's always nice to help your legs up a little bit if you're in a position where you're used to hanging out in. So just slide your hand on your thigh and on an inhale help your legs up. Walk your feet about mat width apart and let your knees touch. And then you can flow into some windshield wipers. So I'm just alternately dropping the knees. Good, and now we'll hug both knees up again, extending the left leg. Hug up the right knee right into the body. Coming into a twist, so you're gonna guide your right leg over and come more on your left side out your right arm. Try to keep your shoulders on the floor. And here you could have your knee land on a brick. So it's like, like this. And then your arm is over. And then you can even turn your gaze to the right. It's more important to have your right shoulder blade on the floor than your right knee on the floor. If this for any reason feels like it's way too much for your lower back, you have any lower back issues, I would suggest bringing both legs up and coming into a twist. All right, let's come back to center. Extend out your right leg this time, hugging the left up. And then guiding the leg over and reaching out the left arm. You can use your right hand to hold down the left leg. Our breath actually instigates stretching from the inside out. Think about that one. So as you breathe, you expand, and in that expansion, every little nook and cranny gets a stretch. Then we'll come 
come into happy baby. So that's pulling your knees up as if you're gonna pull them in your armpits. Flip your shins so they're perpendicular to the floor and then pull down either at your thighs, your shins, or the sides of your feet. Okay, side view. So you should only grab onto your feet if your shoulder blades can continue to stay flat on the floor along with your head. Otherwise, just grab here or here. You can practice pushing your sacrum down towards the floor. Now, start to deepen your breath. Bring some gentle movement into the toes. And then wiggle out the fingers. Opening your eyes to 
light. Join me at seated. Take hands to heart. Just close your eyes with me one more time. Again, tuning into your breath. Knowing that with this practice, you cultivate inner strength, inner strength to manage whatever comes to you with peace and grace. This practice is so much more about what than what we do right here on the mat together. It's about taking the concepts that we learn here about staying focused and breathing and strong and balanced and aligned. Taking those attributes out into the world with us. May you find peace and joy and love and light on your paths. Namaste. Back live in class someday soon.